Okay, so I'm getting very, very interested in the kind of foundations of topology. And one of the nicest objects I've discovered quite recently is this notion of so-called Frechley V-spaces, uh, defined in uh, Sapinski's book. And basically, the way I, I want to look in this discussion at the definition given by Sapinski, my definition, because I tend to like to define things algebraically, um, and also I found a new definition, which I think is very interesting, which is depending upon a particular function, and in some sense it seems a lot simpler, but maybe this is just a, a matter of sort of um, linguistics. Anyway, let's have a look. Sapinski's definition. A Frechley v-space is a set k, each element of which is associated with a class of subsets of k called neighbourhoods of a. That's, that's fairly simple. Now, the next one, the next definition, this is how I would like to define it. So, we've got a set k. Let p of k denote the power set of k. That's the collection of all subsets of k. So, I would define a Frechlet space S as a set k of elements and a set of collections of subsets of k. In other words, well, yes, I mean, that's what this notation means. This is the collection of all subsets of k. And so these zeta x's, they are collections of subsets of k. Um, and we have one of those for every x. So essentially these zeta x's here, these are the collections of neighbourhoods of x. And each particular zeta x has a form. It can be written as a set of um, neighbourhoods n i x, which is a subset of k. And we can index them according to some index set a x. Um, so that's the way I like to define it. But I found a sort of interesting new definition. I sort of feel as if there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between the Frechlet spaces and certain kinds of mappings. And these mappings really have a very simple form. I've not written it very clearly here. Maybe I'll just um, see if I can write it now, if I can hold my phone in my left hand. So the simple way we define such a mapping is just that F maps K to the power set of the power set of k. And so, of course, that's not a Frechley space, but I think it's got the necessary and sufficient information to define such a thing in a fairly straightforward manner, which I'll try and explain. OK, so here's an observation. What's the power set of the power set of k? It's the set of subsets of a power set of k. Now, remember, zeta x is a subset of a power set of k. And so we could consider perhaps zeta x to be a member of this power set of power set of k. And so what f is doing is it's mapping k to this kind of power set of power set of k uh, thing. And the elements in this thing are basically our zeta x's, our collections of neighbourhoods. So this information basically allows us to extract the zeta x's, extract the neighbourhoods, we have the k. It basically means that knowing about this information and this mapping is equivalent to knowing about how this Frechlet space is defined. But let's take a look at the details a bit more closely, just to check we understand what's going on here. Suppose we have one of these mappings from k to the power set of the power set of k. Okay, so what's say we have some element x in k. What's f of x going to be? Well, it's going to be a member of a power set of a power set of k. What's that mean? It means that f of x is a subset of a power set of k. So we could write f of x as some index collection of of elements n i x. Um, and what what are these n i x's? Well, they're essentially subsets of k. They're members of the power set of k, if you like. And if we interpret these as the neighbourhoods of x, then essentially we see how this mapping here um, sort of defines our Frechlet space. 
and conversely each for each letter space can be associated with such a mapping and I think this is sort of interesting because you know when you look at it from a more um, sort of mapping based viewpoint you can think about more things like sort of morphisms and symmetries in different ways